Hi and welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Dr. Lindsay Marie. I'm a Christian comedian missionary doctor sharing a message of hope, health, and wellness for the mind, body, and soul. In today's video, it's going to be a little bit more lighthearted and I'm going to be giving you guys a quiz on medical terminology. And we will be going over 20 terms today plus one bonus term at the end and we'll see how much you know and how much I know as well. So learning medical terminology is basically like learning a second language. Do any of you out there speak a second language or maybe a third or fourth or fifth? Must be nice. I myself can barely learn Spanish and I for sure as heck can't learn French. I actually gave it my best effort this year while living in Belgium trying to learn French, but when trying to pronounce the words, I just sound more like Joey off of Friends. Je m'appelle Claude. Je te floop flee. Oh mon dieu. Oh de fou. Yeah, it's a real shame I didn't take any language courses in high school. When I decided I was going to become a doctor, the advice I got was, Oh, you should take Latin. It's good for medical terminology. Too bad it's a dead language and you can't speak it. Well, I guess you can speak Pig Latin, but the only word I know is ex nay. Kind of like our culture this year. Anyways, let's get into this medical terminology quiz. For every quiz question that we go over, I am going to be describing a sometimes common or everyday medical condition, and you will have five seconds to come up with what the actual medical term for it is. And don't forget to stay till the very end to find out what the craziest, longest, weirdest medical term is, and if you know it, you might just get a prize. Just kidding, I don't have a prize for you. But you can pat yourself on the back for knowing that one because not that many people do, and not even some doctors. Quick disclaimer, there may be a few of these words that I myself cannot pronounce correctly, so if that's the case, don't make fun of me. But anyway, so here we go. And I have my computer here, which I will be reading these medical terms off. Question number one. This is a condition that you may get when you feel a numbness sensation in your limb when you haven't shifted your body's position in a while. For instance, you're sitting down for a long period of time and you start to feel this numbness and tingling sensation in your legs and your feet. Do you know what it might be? This one actually I didn't know myself, and the answer is abdormition. Quick story, this kind of thing happens all the time, but this one morning when I woke up, my leg was so numb that I got up, fell straight to the floor, and that has never happened before. It even made me late for a meeting I was supposed to go to that morning. Man, if I would have known the medical term for this when it happened, I could have just told them why I was late and said, oh, sorry, the old abdormation got to me. Medical terminology question number two. This is the feeling that you get in your head when you're eating something extremely cold, like ice cream a little bit too fast and it makes you go like this. And the answer is sphenopalatine ganglion neuralgia otherwise known as brain freeze. The sphenoid bone in the skull is the structure that is separating your soft palate and your brain, leading to the sensation of brain freeze. Wow, that was a good one. Crazy weird funny medical terminology quiz question number three is a condition that you may feel in your legs or your arms. Some people get it in their eyelids even but it's when you have a fluttering sensation underneath the skin, otherwise known as muscle twitching. What is the medical term for muscle twitching? And the answer to this one is fasciculations. Ugh, that brings me back to my days in medical school when we went over neuroanatomy and physiology, learning all about the complex neuromuscular junction and how it all works to move our muscles. That was a doozy. 
Question number four is something that everybody experiences at some point in their lives, particularly when you're feeling down or sad, and that is the process of crying or shedding some tears. What is the official medical term for crying? And the answer is lacrimation. I'm not crying, I'm lacrimating. Moving on, question number five. What is the medical term for small bumps noted on the tongue? These can otherwise be known as swollen taste buds that come and go. All right, how about we break this one down? If it's coming and going, it is otherwise known as transient. Another word for the tongue is lingual, and another word for taste buds is papillitis. 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 Never mind, I can't say the last word very well, but the answer is transient lingual papillitis. Side note, any medical term that ends in itis means inflammation. So you can basically use that for any of the Latin origins of the word, tack on itis, and you have inflammation of that thing. Question number six. This is gonna be that extremely painful condition you can get sometimes in your big toe if you cut your toenails wrong and it leads to something called an ingrown toenail. What is the official medical term for an ingrown toenail? Five seconds. This one actually gives two medical terms, one in Greek and one in Latin. So the answer in Greek is onchocryptosis, and in Latin it is ungius incarnates, which literally means nail in the flesh. And let me tell you people, working in urgent care, I do a lot of procedures, and this was one of my least favorite procedures that I ever had to do in all of my medical career up to this point. There's just something about having to rip off someone's toenail that gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm a doctor, I should be able to handle it, and I do, but this procedure is not pleasant for the patient nor myself. Question number seven. What is the medical term for the condition where you accidentally bite the inside of your cheek? And the answer is another one that I might not be able to pronounce, so don't hold it against me, but it is Morsicario Bucarum. Did I say that right? Next up, question number eight. What is the medical term for that feeling when you get the wind knocked out of you? This can happen a lot of times in sports games, for instance, soccer or football. If you get knocked down and you hit your chest really hard on the ground, you can feel this sensation. But luckily, it doesn't last very long. You can start to catch your breath and feel better right away. The answer is Transient diaphragmatic spasm. Speaking of diaphragms, this next condition must be one of the most annoying and interruptive conditions that some people get from time to time, and that is the hiccups. When I was younger, every time I had the hiccups, my dad would always tell me, you sound like a chicken choking on its feed. So the medical term for the hiccups is synchronous diaphragmatic flutter. Hmm, I like it. Next up, question number 10. What is the medical term for sneezing? The answer to this one, sternuate. Try using the term sternuate the next time you hear someone sneeze. Okay, everyone, we have made it about halfway through the list now. Aren't you feeling smarter as we go along? Question number 11 is an ophthalmology topic, and it's those little black specks you see floating around your eyes, otherwise known as eye floaters. Typically happens when you're looking at bright lights or a white wall. So 
So these are called Musque Volentantes, or flying flies, which are small pieces of protein suspended in your eye in the jelly. Okay. Question number 12. What is the medical term for wetting your bed at night? Hopefully you're not wetting your bed at night anymore, but you never know. I guess it could happen. And the answer is nocturnal enuresis. Nocturnal meaning at night, enuresis meaning to urinate. Coming down the list, we are on question number 13. This is a condition that happens when you stand up too fast and you feel extremely dizzy. This one you may have heard of before, and it is orthostatic hypotension. It's another common condition that we treat in the clinic and it can be resolved by drinking more water. It can often affect elderly people because as we age, our blood pressures are not as well regulated. Next up is question number 14. Actually, this might be occurring to me right now because I haven't eaten my dinner yet. What is the medical term for your stomach growling? <laughs> just have to apologize because this might be another one that I don't know quite how to say correctly, but the good news is I'm putting these on the screen for you to figure out yourself. And it is Borborgamy. 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 Sounds like some kind of fake meat like bologna or bologna. That's enough of that. Question number 15. What is the medical term for the feeling that you get when you have a hangover? This one might be a little simpler to say, but it is Vesalgia. Vesalgia. And another side note, any medical term that ends in algia means pain. For instance, otalgia, oto means ear, algia, pain, means ear pain, otalgia. And apparently the medical term for hangover, which is vestalgia, comes from a Norwegian origin. Who knew? All right, we just have a few more quiz questions on the list before we get to the last bonus question that I mentioned. If you have made it this far in the video, let me know so far, what has been your favorite medical terminology word? I would like to hear about it. Question number 16. This happens when you are cold, freezing, shivering, and you get those little, little tiny bumps on your arms that stick your hair straight up otherwise known as goosebumps. What is the medical terminology for goosebumps? And the answer is horripilation. Horripilation. Medical terminology quiz question number 17 hits a little bit too close to home for me because I, unfortunately, suffer from this condition. It's something that has plagued me for the last several years of my life. And that is having your nose run like a faucet every single time that you eat. And heaven forbid if you don't have a Kleenex close by. Especially if you are plagued with this condition on a first date. <gasps> But the answer is gustatory rhinitis. Guys, gustatory rhinitis is an awful condition where your nose runs every single time that you eat. Or at least it does for me. Some people it only happens when they eat spicy foods, but for me it's been a huge issue because if I don't have a Kleenex nearby, I'm hurting for certain, especially on a first date. Don't worry, it's not one of the most life-altering conditions one can have, but it is fairly annoying and it is a form of allergies. So something that can help can be as simple as taking an antihistamine in the morning or before you eat so you don't suffer from leaky nose. Next up is question number 18, and that is, what is the medical term for popping your joints? I never pop my joints because for me, it hurts, 
and it just sounds bad, but some people do it all the time. And when you get older, you can just stand up out of a chair and hear that sound of your hip. And the answer is crepitus. Crepitus is a Latin term which literally translates to crack or rattle. And as doctors, we actually use this term under our documentation of a physical exam for someone who comes in, let's say, for arthritis. When we hear or feel that cracking sensation within their knee every time they move it, we get to document crepitus of the knee. Question number 19. This one is somewhat similar to standing up too fast and feeling dizzy, but this one is when you faint suddenly. What is the medical term for that condition? And the answer is vasovagal syncope. Syncope is the term for fainting, and vasovagal is one very common cause of fainting. This type of fainting typically occurs when someone experiences an intense emotional feeling. For instance, if they got hurt and they saw the sight of their own blood, some people don't do too well with blood or needles, and that can cause them to faint. As a doctor, I have seen my fair share of people fainting and I have to run to their rescue, typically laying them down. Immediately after they faint, their blood pressure is quite low and it can be somewhat scary until they start to wake up. You want to see if they are able to drink any water and that usually helps them feel a little bit better and feel back to normal. All right, we just have one more question before we get to our grand finale medical term. And question number 20 is, what is the medical term for shin splints? You know that intense pain that you feel in the middle of your shins after a hardcore session of running? And the answer is medial tibial stress syndrome. Medial just means at the midpoint of your tibia. Tibia is the large bone in the lower segment of your leg. And the term stress syndrome is due to the impact and the repetitiveness of the shins that occurs while running. So finally, that brings us to the grand finale of our medical terminology quiz today. The mother of all medical terms, what is it? I will give you a hint, it is another name for silicosis. And silicosis is a lung disease that is caused by inhaling silica dust. It is otherwise known as the black lung disease. Have you guessed what it is yet? Can we get a drum roll please? And the answer is... And it's gonna take me a while to read it because it is actually the longest word in the English language. Coming in at a whopping 45 letters. And that is pneumonia ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Let's try that again. Pneumonia ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Whew, what a word that was. Well, you guys, that's all I have today for our fun little medical terminology quiz. I hope that it was interesting for you and that you learned something new. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to use a new medical term out in public someday and someone will be surprised at how smart you are. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to share it with anyone you want. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Until next time, bye.